Once upon a time, there was a construction company. We'll call them YouTube. And they stumbled upon this lake and they decided, oh, we're just gonna build a dam on it. I don't know why they decided to build a dam on a random lake for no reason, but they did. And all of a sudden, because they built the dam, the area in the, the valley below the lake suddenly became inhabitable. So you had a bunch of people who were moving in, building houses, starting a life there. But in the very beginning, YouTube only decided to let a very small amount of water through the dam, such that it was kind of like, it's only the high rollers in the town below who were able to collect the water, go back and drink it. And there were a lot of people who just, they weren't getting any water. And so they went to YouTube and they're like, yo, YouTube, we're not getting any water here. It'd be kind of cool if, you know, you, you let some more water through the dam so that we could have some water. And YouTube was like, oh, you want water? All right, we'll blow up the dam. And so they blew up the dam and all of a sudden a lot of people had access to a lot of water. Unfortunately, in that flooding, uh, some people died. And so you had a lot of people with a lot of water, but then YouTube got backlash because people were saying, yo, you, YouTube, you, you killed people in the flooding here. So can you not let that happen? It's going to keep happening year after year if you don't do something about it. So YouTube said, wow, okay, geez, we'll build the dam again, but we'll let more water through than we were in the beginning. So that's what they did. Unfortunately, they didn't put some proper safeguards in place, right? And so they had a bit more flooding. Not as many people died as before, but still some more people dying. And so they got a bunch more backlash yet again. They're like, yo, more people are getting water for sure, but still we got people dying out here. And YouTube said, okay, geez, fine. We'll reinforce the thing. We'll let less water through than before. And so that's where we are now with a blog post that YouTube posted a couple days ago now changing the monetization rules here on YouTube. So they implemented a, a couple new criteria, kind of making the rules a little bit more strict than they were before. And that's the, the second step back in terms of strictness from more of a, an open system that they've had in place for a few years now. The first step was back a few months ago, they instituted a, a 10,000 lifetime view rule on your channel before you were able to start monetizing. Now, as of a couple days ago, what they've instituted is you gotta get, and I'm gonna read my, my little notes here just so I, I don't mess anything up. Um, over the past year, you have to have had 4,000 hours of watch time and your channel has to have 1,000 subscribers before you're eligible to monetize your content on YouTube. Let's break down what those numbers mean. Well, 1,000 subscribers is just pretty obvious. I think you know what that means. But the 4,000 hours of watch time. So that means 240,000 minutes of watch time over the course of a year, which means that if you post, say, 10 minute videos and get an average of 50% retention on them, which means people on average watch five minutes of the video, that's a that's a pretty accurate number to go by. It means you've gotta get 48,000 views over the course of the last year on all your 10 minute videos, which means 4,000 views a month, which overall is not a, a huge amount. Um, and it translates in terms of monetization to about like four to 10 bucks, depending upon the type of content you're, you're, you're making, the ads that are getting run on that. Um, but assuming you had a channel that was at the subscriber threshold, but you didn't, or you had a channel that was doing that, but you didn't have the subscriber count at this point to be able to monetize and your channel was suddenly not eligible anymore, that's about the amount of money that would be missing each month. So those are just the cold hard facts of what YouTube has now implemented in, in their new monetization policy. Now we'll move into my thoughts on the topic, which are obviously bound to upset some people, but I'd like to think that I have some logic behind what I'm gonna say. So first and foremost, as has always been the case with YouTube, communication, not, not the strong suit, right? And so if ever I were to be developing a product, you always want to start the, the most strict you can possibly be and then always be working towards becoming more and more lenient. What you don't want to do is start strict, become really lenient and then say, oops, we became too lenient. We got to roll back because then you're going to have people who are used to having access to that thing, whatever it is, in this case, being able to monetize their channel. And now all of a sudden they're, they don't have access to it. And that's how it worked in this situation is that channels who were previously monetizing, they were receiving emails saying, hey, no longer does your channel match the criteria that we've just implemented, so you're not gonna be able to monetize anymore. And I understand that. Like, look, even if I was making a couple dollars a month, if I all of a sudden receive an email saying, yeah, you can't do this anymore, I'd be like, but that's kind of lame. I already, what was wrong with what I was doing before? I was making original quality content 
And I, you know, it was only a couple bucks a month, but at least it was happening. I was on the, I was on the road and to, to success. And that's, you know, that's going to be at least mentally a bit of a, a road bump, a bit of a setback to have that removed from you. So I agree that the communication, that having to scale back something that's already been open, that's certainly not ideal. On the other hand, I'm going to throw out a, a back in my day and I hate to do it, but back in my day, when I started on YouTube, the idea that I could even monetize my content ever at any point uh, was kind of non-existent. I just started, and I've said this probably in a million videos before, I started because I wanted to show off my good scores at Call of Duty and I thought people would think I was cool because of that. I knew that there was a partner program that existed at that time, but like gaming channels were just not something eligible for that ever. And in the very beginning, I didn't even realize necessarily that Machinima, if you got your content on there, you'd be able to monetize from it. I learned that pretty quickly, uh, but that was like the only possibility to monetize was if you got your content onto Machinima. And so it's like most people at that time, they got into YouTube again because they had a passion for what they were doing and they just wanted to share it with the rest of the world. Again, that is not to say there is anything wrong with wanting to earn a return off of what you're doing. Uh, that would be the most hypocritical thing for me to possibly say. It's great to be able to earn money off of things and I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. I wouldn't be able to produce content as often as I do if I weren't able to make a living off of it. So by all means, it is great to do. However, I think that in this situation, a lot of the channels that are having their ability to monetize revoked, and again, this is not a 100% accurate generalization. There are gonna be exceptions to this rule, and I acknowledge that you are out there, but many of the channels that are getting a large amount of viewership, but are not at the subscriber count threshold, they're uploading like news clips. It's re-uploads from other channels that, you know, if you're searching for a news clip on a current event, you don't really care what channel it comes from. You just search for it in the YouTube search. It comes up, you click on it if it seems right. And that could be from any channel. And so you'll have these clips that could be getting millions of views. These channels are monetizing them, even though they don't necessarily own the rights to the content. And they're actually get a lot of the ad pool uh, that's available on YouTube that all the channels have to share is going to those sorts of channels. And so now you have some of those that are no longer able to monetize, which then enables a lot of the channels that are producing original content to have some of those ads. Because contrary to what you might think, there's not an ad that runs on every single video every single time that you click on it if it has monetization enabled. There's a finite pool of ad space. Google has to sell all those ads. They sell them in bulk, but still the sales team has to actually go out and make deals to sell that ad space. And there's not enough to cover the billions and billions of views that happen every single day on YouTube. But you might get a little bit more of a pool now that some of those channels are no longer eligible that are re-uploading other content. Again, there are going to be exceptions to the rule of people who are making their own content getting a lot of viewership, but they haven't hit the thousand subscriber threshold. But with those channels, because they're not personality driven, you click on the news clip, you watch it, but you don't think to subscribe to the channel because it's not something that you're like, oh, I'm gonna check back later here and, and see what other, I don't know, news clip they've uploaded, right? So that's a positive there. And on the other hand, for channels that perhaps don't hit either of the criteria yet, but they're working on it. Like, A, I respect the hustle, um, I'm glad that you're you're trying your hand out. If you were able to monetize before, but you weren't hitting the uh, the watch time threshold, it means again it was like four to ten bucks a month. Which, while I disagree with becoming lenient and then rolling back the policy, that's a bummer. At the very least, in most places, that's about an hour of of work at like a retail place, something like that. And so, if the only reason that you were making videos was to get the four to 10 bucks a month. While obviously, you know, whatever motivates you motivates you, and I'm not gonna question your, your motives, you do you. You can still work on what you're doing, making YouTube videos, and if you wanna supplement that income via like working it out. Like if you are working more than an hour on making YouTube videos every month, and you're doing it just for that four to 10 bucks, it means you're undervaluing yourself because you could work that one hour elsewhere and you would be making more money than you are off of your YouTube videos. So I, again, might sound insensitive. I don't mean for it to, but you should also value your own time, right? And so if you're working 10, 20 hours 
and the only reason you're doing it is for that four to 10 bucks, you're really undervaluing your time. And so you should look at it as something that's a, a hobby, a passion of yours. That way, even if it doesn't pan out into anything where you're getting millions upon millions of views, at least you look at what you're doing and you take pride in it and you're happy you invested your time in it just because you had fun. And it's not just this constant grind and struggle and the only reason you're doing it is in the hopes that somehow it it blows up and there's this massive windfall that comes along with it. Again, you're allowed to do whatever you want um, in, in your life. If that is why you're making YouTube videos, then you do you. But I think that you'll be in a, a happier state of mind if the reason why you're approaching it is just because you really enjoy the process of making the content because there are a lot of people out there making YouTube videos these days. I will freely admit that I'm sure part of the reason why I was able to get to the point that I am at today was highly based on timing. There were not nearly as many people doing it when I started as there are now that people look at YouTube and they say, oh my God, look at all these people who are making a massive living off of this. I wanna try my hand at it too. You have two thirds of middle schoolers responding to a survey saying, I wanna be a YouTube vlogger for a career when I grow up. That's just, it's a mind boggling amount of people who wanna get into it and not all of them are gonna be able to, obviously. So it means that when you approach it, you just, you wanna enjoy what you're doing. Um, so anyway, that's just my, that's my two cents on the matter. Don't, I, I again, <laughs> I know that some people are going to say, well, you, you're getting all these views and you've made a living on it and, and you're getting money. That's hypocritical for you to say, but still the motivation that I had in the very beginning, that, that stands. And so I don't, I don't want to like be on a high horse here and say that that's the right approach. Um, but it just mentally makes things easier when you're just trying to have fun with something versus I need to do this so that something happens down the road that there's actually not necessarily a great chance of. You don't want to regret your time spent um, when you're, if you're undervaluing your, your time when you could work at some other job and it, it would, even minimum wage would pay more than the amount of hours that are turning into AdSense return on YouTube. So anyway, I disagree with the fact that opening the floodgates and then rolling them back, like receiving the email after you've already been monetizing, saying you're no longer gonna be eligible, no matter what, that's gonna be a bummer. And uh, I, you know, I'm sorry if that happened to you, um, but fortunately you still have the chance to, you know, hit those thresholds and I hope you will be able to soon enough and, uh, and get right back into the swing of things. I also hope that like, I don't know the specifics on this, but like if you, I, I think they only pay out after you've hit a hundred dollar balance it, that you've accrued in AdSense. And I don't know what the deal is gonna be. Like if you were at $99 and then your channel gets disallowed for monetization, are they just gonna hold that until later on down the road when you're able to monetize again and hit that $100? I don't know. I'm hoping that at the very least they pay out what is owed to channels that have had the monetization removed from them. I don't know. So barring that sort of thing, I wish you the best. Again, if you're starting out trying to make content, um, it's always nice to earn a return off of what you're doing. I totally agree, but also try to make sure that you're enjoying the process so that no matter what happens, you you don't regret your time spent doing what you're doing. So anyway, moral of the story, do I think that YouTube is actively trying to uh, go after smaller channels? I don't think so. I think they have a, a tough uh, roadmap that they're trying to navigate. And are they making decisions perfectly correctly? I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm don't envy having to make the decisions myself. I'm glad I don't have to make the decisions, but still, yes, there is a bit of irony in the fact that oftentimes it's the bigger channels doing things that spike these changes, which then impact the smaller channels. That doesn't make a great deal of <laughs> sense, but I, I guess, what it does do is that once you are eligible for monetization, I think that there will be potentially more ads that are available to fill your views, which will translate into higher rates. So that could be something to look forward to on the plus side. And I know they're trying to not have ads running on controversial content. That's their whole goal. So anywho, that's the nature of the game. Thanks for watching. And uh, I guess we'll leave it off there. I wish you all the best if you're uh, trying to make YouTube videos and hopefully it'll 
work out for you. Hopefully you'll blow up much bigger than me. So I'll see you next time. Thank you.